Hello, Dr. Andy Rosenfarb here with AccuVision Acupuncture. Today we want to talk about macular drusen. Macular drusen is a very important subject for those who might be dealing with early stage macular degeneration. We're going to talk all about that. So first and foremost, what is macular drusen? So macular drusen, according to the American Academy of Ophthalmology, they're yellow deposits under the retina. Drusen are, drusen are made up of lipids and proteins. They're likely, they likely, according to these guys, do not cause age-related macular degeneration, AMD. But having drusen increases a person's risk of developing macular degeneration, uh, and this may be a sign of AMD. Now, I don't agree with that fully, but that is the definition of American Academy of Ophthalmology. Uh, a better explanation uh, I found on a, uh, a, a website that I really like called brightfocus.org. Now, their explanation is this. Drusen are de a defining feature of macular degeneration. These small yellow-white deposits on the retina can be detected by an ophthalmologist during a dilated eye exam or with retinal photography. People with more than a few small drusen are said to have early-stage macular degeneration. Right? That is a little bit more accurate. Um, as I see it, uh, when there is the presence of drusen, uh, there is definitely an early stage and a building uh, case for macular degeneration. Now, do we know how, how advanced it's going to get? No. So let's go back for a minute and talk about what exactly is drusen. So drusen are, again, these yellow... Uh, I'm going to post a picture of what it looks like when we fin when I finish the recording for those of you guys who are in our Facebook group. Uh, they're little yellow or white dots. So when the doctor dilates your eye, they're looking in the back of your eye. It's called a fundus exam. They'll use a high-intensity uh, uh, HD camera to either take a video or a snapshot picture, usually a picture of the back of the eye. Uh, it's very, very interesting. The, the HD uh, technology is fantastic today, and you can get a really, really good imaging of the back of your eye. Again, that's called a fundus imaging. Sometimes, uh, if they want to get more specific detail and contrast, they'll do what's called uh, angiography. Uh, they'll basically inject a dye into fluorescein angiography. They'll inject dye into you while they take the pictures, and that'll create better contrast. And those are usually for more stro eye strokes or, or other complications that, that uh, they're, they're kind of looking for more detail. So what happens is this, this drusen, which is primarily made up of fat and some protein, and there's some calcium in there. So it's very similar to arterial plaque, uh, same, same type of stuff. So this, this drusen can accumulate over time. Now, where does it come from? That's not really 100% clear. Uh, some of the theories are that it is just metabolic waste product from the eye's metabolic processing. As we know, all cells are like little miniature versions of us. They eat uh, nutrients and they breathe in air and they respirate and they metabolize and digest and get rid of waste products. It's believed by some that drusen is the accumulation of metabolic waste product that build up uh, under the eye, specifically in the area of the macula, under the RPE, retinal pigment epithelium. So this can be seen in, uh, again, the, taking the picture of the back of the eye through a dilation, which is a fundus examination, and you can also see it through what's called an OCT, ocular coherence tomography. And with that is it's a cross section of the macula that allows us to observe the structural integrity of the macula. Uh, it will also give evidence of uh, the accumulation of macular drusen. So again, this macular drusen is this cholesterol protein uh, probable waste product that's built up on the eye. Uh, what happens too, more for those of you guys who are pretty interested in the functionality and the biophysiology of what's going on, I won't get too into it, but there is a membrane uh, in the back of the eye, the retina, called the Bruch's membrane. B-R-U-C-H is the uh, Bruch's membrane that is responsible for breaking down the, the wastes in the eye and getting rid of it. So it's suspected that the Bruch's membrane 
uh, in, in function reduces its functional capacity, and that's one of the reasons why the drusen of the ocular waste will accumulate. Quite, sta quite simply stated, the body is not breaking down this, this waste product and getting rid of it. So it's just kind of like, it's almost like eye constipation. It's just this, 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 this fat and this protein that just sits in your eye. And as it accumulates, it can become obstructive to your vision, right? Just think of, um, so the light comes in and it's supposed to hit the back of your retina. It comes in through your pupil and then it hits the back of your retina. But if you have this druse in there, if you have this, this metabolic waste that becomes obstructive, then it's not going to hit and you're going to have either distorted vision or you're going to have wavy vision or patchy vision or eventually when macular degeneration uh, advances, you have uh, sometimes complete loss of central vision. And what that means is uh, facial recognition, reading, driving becomes almost impossible. It's something that, uh, that, that people will, will eventually lose their license and stuff like that. So it's pretty scary. You know, uh, patients will uh, often go to doctor's office to go for their, their, you know, annual eye appointment and their checkup. And the doctor will tell them, hey, you know, you have early stage macular degeneration. Uh, I see some drusen in your eyes. Or they'll just say there's drusen. And people are just like, okay, you know, they don't really talk about it. And they leave, and they go home, and then they'll Google it, macular degeneration, or they'll Google uh, macular drusen, and they'll freak out because obviously the, uh, prognosis is not great. You know, macular degeneration, there's no conventional treatment for macular degeneration. Uh, there is no, uh, no surgery, nothing. There's nothing right now available for it. Uh, if you are to develop the, uh, from the dr this dry type macular degeneration, which is what we're talking about that, that this can progress into, uh, you can also have called what wet type macular degeneration. So you have dry type macular degeneration and wet type macular degeneration. I don't want to get too into the types of macular degeneration right now, but wet type just means that you have bleeding, right? You have new blood vessels grow that actually bleed. And there is conventional treatment for that. They'll do eye injections. Sometimes they'll cauterize and do some laser treatments on the, uh, if, if, to laser up the, the leaking blood vessels, so to speak, and uh, injections of things, um, anti-VEGF. So you'll have things like Avastin, Lucentis, uh, ILEA injections, which will help stop the bleeding, but really don't do anything for the drusen of the macular degeneration. So although it is a treatment for bleeding, it really won't do much for macular degeneration. But let's get back to the drusen. So now you guys know what drusen is, what it's about, and how uh, it can accumulate and cause uh, a progressive state of macular degeneration where people can lose their central vision. Now what can you do about it, more importantly? Glad you asked. What we can do about it is the idea is there's a few things we want to look at. First is, can we break it down? Somebody just added, asked a question the other day. Can you actually get rid of macular degeneration? And in my experience, yes, you can. Um, there's a lot of factors around that. But what happens again is there is there can be an underlying issue of fat metabolism, meaning the body is not breaking fat down. And why can that be? There are two ways the body breaks fat down, all right? The first is through enzyme activity. The pancreas releases enzymes, or we can take uh, external enzymes. So uh, lipase, or lipase, depending on what part of the country you're from, is an enzyme that breaks down fat in the body. The other thing in the body that breaks down fat is bile, right? Bile comes from the liver and gallbladder. Bile emulsifies fat in the body. So if your pancreas isn't working because you have pancreatic insufficiency or things like diabetes and or you have a sluggish gallbladder, maybe gallstones, maybe um, maybe you've had your gallbladder removed. And that's a factor, too. So if you have your gallbladder removed, then you're not really producing and storing a lot of bile. Liver has to take over for that. And those of you who've had that, you know, you may have a problem eating fat, greasy, fried foods or, or dairy because those, those fatty foods, the liver has to have the bile to break down that nutritional intake of fats. So it's the same thing with this drusen, right? Fat accumulates in the body, and if you don't have the enzymes or the bile to break it down, uh, there can be problems. Also, again, we mentioned earlier things like high blood sugar, right? Blood sugar, sugar turns into fat. So a lot of my diabetic patients will be way more susceptible to the accumulation of drusen, accumulation of body fat, accumulation of 
of fat because why? Because the sugar in the body isn't moving into the cells to use for energy. So it's actually sitting and the body has to convert it into a storage form of energy. So it's going to turn it into fat. So the more fat the body accumulates, the more fat it's going to deposit throughout the body. Again, sometimes under the tissue and the adipose layers, um, but could also go into the vascular system. We see that our blood vessels clog up. We can get arterial plaque, arteriosclerosis, um, certainly cholesterol, and your um, low-density lipoproteins can build up and, and just be obstructive to your bloodstream. So uh, bad fats are, are not a good thing, and having a high diet in and junk food, uh, specifically trans fats, can most certainly increase this, this production of fat. Greasy fried foods as well. Things like vegetable oil, for sure, are going to contribute to that as well. So the other thing we want to look at is, so those are things, the factors that can cause it. So now look at some factors that can help break down drusen, right? And by virtue of what we just talked about, we want to look at certain enzymes, increasing bile production, certain nutrients that are going to be fat busters, that are going to break fat down and also help control the glycemic index. That is your blood sugar. So we want stable blood sugar, not too much fat, not too much sugar in the diet. So we're not producing more fat and lipids. So things like green tea is really effective. Um, <clears throat> it's a diuretic, but it also emulsifies fat. Uh, other things like resveratrol, a product we use is called Longevinex. Resveratrol comes from red grapes, right, which is also in red wine. So that's why it's in a lot of cultures, a lot of people will have a red wine after red meat, right, because of the fat in there in the resveratrol in the red wine will help break down red meat that comes from animals. So resveratrol is very, very good to help break the dietary fat down, also the uh, drusen. So we've seen uh, results with that. Uh, there's another product that we use called Tudka, T-U-D-C-A, which is a synthetic bile salt, which is super, super effective. And one of the main things we use for breaking down, um, breaking down drusen and fat in the body. It's very, very healthy for the liver too, good for liver detox, great for diabetics, great to help clean the body out of excess unwanted fat. Very, very good for gallstones and, um, and liver issues as well. Uh, we, we use this for well. There's also uh, supplements that can help uh, break down, uh, break down, uh, help improve liver function to break down fats a lot better. So again, uh, liver and gallbladder function is very, very important when we're talking about breaking down fats. Also taking digestive enzymes, specifically lipase, and, uh, and anything that's going to help break down sugars better is going to be very, very useful when we're talking about breaking down drusen. And then the last thing I want to talk about with uh, with drusen is protection. So the more recent research suggests that drusen accumulates uh, because of accelerated breakdown due to oxidative stress. Okay, so if we don't have the antioxidant protection that uh, carotenoid antioxidants provide, things like vitamin A, retinal palmitate, lutein, zeaxanthin, astaxanthin, mesozeaxanthin, leafy green vegetables, all these these supplements and nutrients and foods that we know that are so useful in protecting the macula, if we're deficient in those, the macula doesn't get the protection it needs dietarily from what? From the two main forms of stress that can really give the macula uh, a beating, pretty much, which is blue light comes from phones, cell phones, uh, and screens and computers, and also UV radiation. Right, So UVA, UVB light rays come from the sun, so we want to use sunglasses to protect when we're outside, especially uh, from the hours of 10 to 2, right, when the sun, on a sunny day, when the sun is most, most active. Also, if you're uh, on the slopes, uh, uh, on the water, where the sun is more reflective, you definitely want eye protection around there. So the other thing we want to use is, so my glasses here, they have a blue light coating. All right, so if you're on screens, that's fine. We're all on screens all the time, but you have to protect your eyes. You protect them with carotenoid antioxidants and you protect them with blue light. Blue light filters, so put your phone setting to the blue, to the, to the night mode setting. And you also want to wear glasses. Guys, even if you don't have a prescription, if you don't wear glasses for up close and working, you still can get clear glasses that have uh, blue light protection in it. Uh, if you already have glasses, you can go to your optometrist, I'm sorry, your optician, 
and they will add a coating uh, to protect your eyes from blue light. And also, again, when you're outside, you want to use wraparound sunglasses when you're protecting from UV radiation. Blue light, you can use flat front glasses like these. They're called flat front glasses because they have a flat front. So the wraparound, of course, kind of wrap around a little bit more. Um, those are better for outside for UVA and UVB protection. And because I'm working on screens which directly come straight at me in most cases, uh, you can use flat front glasses without, without any concern around there because blue light doesn't tend to bounce around from screens, although when you're outside from the sun, it will bounce around. So we do want, want those, but if you're wearing UVA, UVB protected eyewear, you should be in good shape. So what else can we do to help with macular drusen? Diet, eye exercises, really helpful. Watching your cholesterol, green tea, staying hydrated, uh, chewing your food, right? We gotta chew to make sure. Also adding more good fats. Add more good fats to your diet. Fish oils, coconut oils, olive oil, um, all of these, these healthier type of oils that are going to uh, help repair and offset the, the ratio of, of bad fats to good fats. The, the good fats actually break down the bad fats. So eye exercise can be really hell, and also things like ophthalmic acupuncture and alternating current stimulation will stimulate the Bruch's membrane. Right, that's what we're trying to get after here. We talked earlier, if you guys are paying attention, we're talking about the Bruch's membrane, which gets tired like every other part of our body with age. So we need to activate it and stimulate it. And when we activate the Bruch's membrane, that is going to facilitate a breakdown in digestion of the macular juice and that's accumulated. Hope that was helpful for you guys. If you have any other questions about macular drusen, macular generation, or anything related to macular or anything for eye health for that matter, please feel free to reach out, post your comments down in our Facebook group, or reach out to me, and I am happy to talk to you more about your condition or if it's for a family or a loved one. Good to see you. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day.